Uh, we know there's Brother Jack. Uh, we know that we are to labor to enter into his rest. And so that's that's where we want to be. We want to be in the rest of the Lord. Okay. And um, and so, Brother Fred, go ahead. Okay. With the series, Walking In With The Voice, uh, this first message is uh, the introduction to the voice. And in, in the beginning, uh, in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, uh, were there in the garden. God placed them in a garden, and there was a place where the devil was, and uh, they were to take dominion over it, and that man bring forth God's kingdom, because that is his dominion, is God's kingdom, and uh, the way they were to do it, and, and this is real good information for us, because we're in a situation where the devil's around us, and we need to bring forth the kingdom, reshape the, the culture and uh, bring forth the kingdom of God and bring forth his dominion in the midst of uh, where there is opposition and the enemies. And uh, the, the way Adam and Eve were to do it, uh, as we see in uh, Genesis 3, 8, the, with the voice, mm -hmm. they walked with the voice. I want you to read this verse. Adam and Eve heard the voice of the Lord of God, the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Okay. So as Sherry said earlier, uh, God's not like a man. He's spirit. Uh, he is spirit. And, uh, the way we walk with him is to walk with his voice, hear what he has to say. And uh, that's what we all need to do. But it's not just there. It's throughout the Bible. It's mm -hmm. his voice. Mm -hmm. We need to hear his voice. And so tonight we're talking about how important it is to hear uh, God's voice and, and to walk with, with him. There's a lot said about uh, walking with God in the Bible, but uh, sometimes it's hard to think about how do we walk with God when he's not like we are exactly, uh, he is spirit uh, and he speaks and we can hear that voice. And I want to go to uh, the New Testament in John uh, chapter one. And uh, in essence, uh, this says that in the beginning was the voice and the mm -hmm. voice was with God and the voice was God. And so mm -hmm. God has always been, there's always been the voice. Mm -hmm. He's speaking and creating and bringing things into existence. And when we understand mm -hmm. that he is the voice and we can walk with him and the way we walk with him is by relating to that voice and hearing the voice and fine tuning our ears, our spirit to hear the voice of God. So I want you to read uh, a couple of verses here in John chapter one. Before time itself was measured, the voice <laughs> was speaking. The voice was and is God. The voice took on flesh and became human and chose to live alongside of us. We have seen him enveloped in undeniable splendor, the one true son of the father evidenced in the perfect balance of grace and truth okay so in the beginning was the voice and the voice was, was with god and the voice was, was god, god and the voice created everything mm -hmm. and has life brought life and that life is the light of men it's the light that comes from hearing his voice that's how we became mm -hmm. christians we heard his voice hallelujah and, and uh, because it takes faith and we hear his voice. Patty was asking what scripture was that? It was John uh, 1. 1, 1, verse 1 and verse 14 then. And then uh, the voice became flesh and we know him as Jesus. And that's John 1, 14. But he, the voice is where we get the life from. And by his speaking to us, he drew us to himself and we became born again. Um, for it's by grace. Uh, through faith that we became born again. And so we've all heard his voice and it's important for us to fine tune our hearing of the voice of God. And that way we will be uh, by faith, we'll be operating in faith and we will be pleasing him. 
and you cannot please him without faith mm -hmm. and okay so let's just think then why is it important to hear god well some of and you might say well i know a lot of scriptures well nobody knows all the scriptures and sometimes you might not know the appropriate scripture uh, for your situation and sometimes there uh, appears to be some tension between uh, the verses and so if we're only relying on a carnal knowledge of the scriptures sometimes uh, we don't know what to do and and here's a pretty good example in proverbs uh, 26 uh, it says uh, speak to a fool in his uh, according to his folly and the next verse uh, don't speak to a fool. And so I want Cherry to read these two verses from Proverbs 26. Uh, 26, 4 and 5. Do not answer a fool according to his folly. Answer a fool according to his folly. Okay, those are verses 4 and 5. They, they right. Seem, they seem contradictory. And we wouldn't know which one to apply. Now, I mean, if you ever come across a fool uh, <laughs> who's speaking with folly, how, how would you address that person? It's only by hearing the voice oh. that you know what to do. And you might say, well, that's, uh, I may not have many uh, fools in my path, but uh, here's something much more significant. And this is, how do we enter the kingdom of God? Sometimes we enter the kingdom of God through inheritance as a little child. And we just sit here as a child, believe, uh, just sit uh, close to the Lord and, and he will give us an inheritance. We enter the kingdom. Uh, but sometimes we have to fight. Yes. And so if we're fighting and we're not just supposed to receive it, well, we're not doing the right thing. Or if we're supposed to uh, receive it and not fight, we can get confused. The only way you know how to operate is by hearing the voice. So let's look at uh, these two verses, Matthew uh, 18, 3 and Matthew eleven twelve. 12. Okay, Matthew 18, 3 said, Assuredly, I say unto you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. And then in Matthew eleven twelve, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Okay. Hallelujah. So there... You, you cannot know with a carnal mind what you're supposed to do in order to enter into the kingdom of God. Sometimes you receive it in inheritance. Sometimes you fight for it. And the only way you know is mm -hmm. by hearing. So why is it important that we hear the Lord? Because it's the strategy. You, uh, when you hear the strat hear the voice of the Lord, you will know the strategy. You'll know what to do. And, and just think about it for a moment about faith. Well, faith comes from hearing the voice. Mm -hmm. Faith uh, it comes, and anything that is not of faith is sin. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. So with faith, it takes faith to please God, and we have to hear. We have to mm -hmm. hear the voice. Mm -hmm. So if we're not hearing the voice, we're not operating in faith. When oh, we hear wow, the voice, wow. we'll have faith arise in us. Mm -hmm. We'll know what to do, and we'll know how to do it. Mm -hmm. so read these verses, Sherry. Romans ten seventeen. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And then Hebrews eleven six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. And whatever is not of faith is, is sin. So it's very important for us to hear the voice so we can operate in faith and please him and, and do what he wants wants us to do. Uh, that's so important. Now, we need to be operating in grace. You know, there's mm -hmm. the concept of grace versus works. Now, if, if I am focusing on works, then I'm talking about my performance. So my performance, uh, if, I, if I'm say I'm working for things and I deserve to get what I want uh, because I'm working for them and all of the things I do uh, are real good and so I ought to be getting what I deserve. Well, that's works. But that it's much broader than that because that also could be 
if I apply a formula, if I apply what somebody has taught me about how faith operates, for example, I apply that, uh, that's about works because I have applied a formula and I should get the result that I want. Uh, or if I've been good and I've done these things, I deserve these things. No, everything is by grace. Every, mm. It's not by works. See, works is saying, I deserve to, to have breakthrough. I deserve uh, to have uh, the blessings of God because I have done the right things. No, it's all by grace. Hallelujah. 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 Grace is so important. And what grace is, is basically we're stepping into what God has declared. And so we've got to be listening mm, to that voice. that voice. That's grace. We're stepping in into the momentum of what he's already declared. And if we're not hearing, if we're not hearing the voice, then, then we're not d doing what needs to be done because we need to step into the voice of what God has mm -hmm. been declaring grace. So it's by grace. And you know, uh, Zechariah, um, they said, uh, Zechariah, it's not by uh, power, it's not by might, right. but it's by my spirit, the spirit of grace. You read that verse, please. Okay. Where is it? Zechariah 4, 6. Is it? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Jerubal, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Okay. So we're operating in grace. We'll always operate in grace. Ephesians uh, chapter two has these two incredible uh, three verses there about grace that in the ages to come, God's going to be revealing the riches of his grace, mm, not mm, the riches mm. of your works but the riches of, of his, his grace. grace. What I what I think about is he's going to be pulling the curtains back a little bit further and say, oh, hallelujah. This hallelujah. is by grace. This is the riches of grace. And through eternity, mm. you're going to see more and more of that. And we are saved by grace through faith. Mm. And we have faith because we've heard his voice. Shall you read the Ephesians? Okay, Ephesians 2, verses 7 through 9 that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of by works, lest any man should boast. No, no. Oh, glory to God. It's by grace. It's by what God is doing by what God is working uh, through us. Now, the perfect example of someone who has walked with the voice is Jesus. Mm, He's hallelujah. the perfect example of walking mm -hmm. with the voice because it, we see in uh, John chapter 5, 19, I can do nothing of myself, but I do what I see my father do and then in uh, John 12, 50, he says, I only speak what I hear my father say. In other words, he's saying, I only speak what I hear the voice mm, say. Mm, mm. That he's walking this way. Mm, mm. I want you to read these two verses. Okay. Then Jesus answered and said to them, this is, is John 5, verse 19. Then Jesus answered and said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing for himself or of himself. And that's talking to you and I too. But what he sees the father do, for whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. And then in John 12, verse 50, and I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the father has told me, so I speak. Okay. So what we're seeing here is it's by grace. It's all by grace. We cannot make things happen. Uh, and you might think, oh, I know a formula. Mm -hmm. uh, or I know these words to say. 
and speak and things will happen. No, you don't. It's by mm -hmm. grace. It's all by grace. And it's by hearing the voice. It's by grace through faith uh, that this operates. And I said that Jesus only spoke what he heard. Okay, so he's hearing a voice. And he's continually going and he never says anything unless he has heard the voice first. This is our perfect example. We're supposed to follow Jesus. And I give you an, an example here in uh, John chapter 2, uh, when Jesus turned the water to wine. Now, he went up to a wedding festival. His mother was there, and his mother came to him, and his disciples were with him, and his, his mother came to him and uh, said, they have no wine. I'm in uh, John chapter 2. They have no wine. And, and then Jesus said, a uh, woman, what has that to do with me? How, how does that issue concern me? Uh, this is not my hour. It's mm -hmm. not my hour. It hasn't come yet. It's not my time to perform miracles. That's what he's saying. We have a thunderstorm going through here. Uh, oh, it is not my time to perform miracles. But something is about to change. Something is about to shift. Because Jesus is always listening to the voice. Oh, hallelujah, and, hallelujah. And, and things are about to happen. And the mother says mm. to the servants, do whatever he says. Now he cannot say anything unless he, he has heard the voice. voice. Woo! Glory. But, but the voice, see, is beginning to proclaim that something else has happened. It has, up until this moment, it has not been his time to perform miracles but he is so in tune to the father's voice that he begins to see that something is about to happen. The father wants some changes. The father's beginning to do something where, where it hadn't even been on the record that it was going to happen that yet. Uh, I'm sure Jesus thought it was going to happen uh, later on, but he's, he's, the father is moving and he's speaking and, and he says, the father hears this voice, fill the water pots with, with water. water. And Hallelujah. Jesus Hallelujah. hears this. Okay, it's not his time to mm. do miracles yet. But then all of a sudden he hears a voice, fill the Ooh, water Hallelujah. Pots with water. So he turns to the servant. Woo! What does he say? Fill the water pots with, with water. water. And then, so they fill the water pots. And then he says, He's hearing something. Mm. Jesus is hearing something. Now draw out from that water and take it to the governor of the feast. And so Jesus says to the servant, because he's heard something. He, he couldn't say this until he's heard it. Because he said, I only speak what I hear my father say. But he's heard now to say to the servants, draw from the water and take it to the governor. Oh, oh hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. You see a miracle about oh, to happen at, at a time when there weren't supposed to be miracles mm -hmm. yet, where Jesus wasn't supposed to be performing hallelujah. miracles yet, but he's always listening. So what he's going to do, hallelujah. he's going to step into the momentum of what the Whoa, Father hallelujah. is declaring, and that is grace. Woo. Oh, hallelujah. You, you can't go by formulas. Jesus didn't operate by formulas. Oh, he, He's and you cannot, with the voice. you cannot operate mm. with formulas. You cannot operate with yesterday's manna. You've got oh, to no, operate no, 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 in what no, the no, no, Father is saying, what the voice oh, is saying now. That, that's, this message is important. This message is important because we all need our spirits in tune to the, the voice, voice of God and know what he's doing because he's changing. He said, I'm bringing a new thing. I'm bringing new things. Yes, yes. Don't, don't, don't rely on, on the things of old or, the, or, or what you've heard in the old or, or what the dead people have taught you. Don't rely on those things. No, that, that's not going to work. You, mm -hmm. You've got to hear the present day truth, what the Father is saying, what the voice is speaking to you well, that's where, where that's where life it's in the it's in the voice hearing the voice you know that's what john 1 verse 4 says it, it's in the voice there is life and the life is the light of men so if we hear the voice then we have life 
everything, mm, everything, everything uh, connected with you is concerned about the voice because the voice oh, brings forth hallelujah. faith in you. And without faith, faith it's, it's impossible uh -huh. to please God. And whatever is not of faith is sin. So you must hear the voice if you're going to please God. Don't you want to please hallelujah. God? Sure you hallelujah. do. Oh, we all want to please, we want to please him. So what we see here is that hmm, Hallelujah. even at a time the schedule was, there wasn't supposed to be a miracle performed by Jesus, but there was a little lady, her name was Mary. She was highly favored of God. And she, she began uh, looking around and thinking and saying, and she knew. Oh, hallelujah. I believe she had a relationship with, 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 with the Father. With the Father and with the voice. Oh, hallelujah. And the Spirit of God. And she knew what could uh, what could happen. And, and be, things began to happen. And Jesus, who walked like a man, filled with the Holy Spirit. And it's now it's time. Things are going to change. It began to shift because there's somebody moving in faith, because why was she moving in faith? Because the Father's stirring up faith in her. Where's faith come from? Well, it says that we've all been given a measure of faith. Amen. And so the Father's stirring up faith in mm. Mary, mm, and, and, and he's speaking to Jesus, and he's saying, fill the water pots with water, water, and draw the water from the pots, and take it to the governor. And when they took it to the governor, when they took it to the governor, he said, you've saved the best till last. Yeah. Oh, you've saved, the, you've saved the best till last. We, we've had this tradition that the good wine has been poured out early. This tradition, we've had this formula. Uh, we've had this uh, uh, rules and regulations. The good wine was poured out first, but now... Because Jesus is on the scene and Jesus is listening to the voice, the best wine is saved and is coming forth in this day. Oh, Jesus hallelujah, is the perfect hallelujah. example of the one who is walking with mm, the voice. Mm, this mm. message is about walking Whoa, with the voice, hallelujah. understanding how to walk with the voice. If you're going to be have faith, then then you need to know this message. You need to understand what the voice is and how important it is to hear the voice because you cannot do anything on your own. It, it's going to take grace. Mm -hmm. you, you've got to know where the Father is moving, where the voice is speaking, what is the voice is bringing forth, and, and you begin to step into the momentum of, of what has been declared mm -hmm. by the voice of God, God. Amen. and that Amen. is grace. You know, Hallelujah. I think about other Hallelujah. times where where it looked like Jesus changed things, and the and the Syrophoenician woman, uh, she came to him and wanted healing, and and he said, uh, "Oh, it, it, it's not time." Mm. Uh, you it's know, the children's bread. It's this is uh, healing is for the children's bread, but. But all of a sudden, there's a shifting, and and the father's moving, and the, oh, and the voice yeah. is changing, and he, and, and when she said, "Oh, oh, oh, oh," shut uh, up, shut but up. the crumbs, uh, the dogs get the crumbs, crumbs off, off of the, the table. table, and Jesus said, "Oh, because he's hearing Wait some things now." He said, your daughter, daughter. is healed. Your oh, daughter is delivered hallelujah. from the demonic forces. Your daughter is delivered hallelujah. because he's hearing some things. He's hearing the voice. And at one moment he said, oh, no, this is not your season. This is not your time uh, to receive healing. But all of a sudden, the father's love yeah. is pouring hallelujah. out to the child. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. And, mm. and the words are beginning to speak. Uh, the sound from heaven. Uh, the father is saying, oh, the mm. daughter mm. is healed. Mm. The daughter is healed. It, so hallelujah. it looks like Jesus you, is Jesus. changing, but no, of course not. He, he's He's very focused. He's he's hearing the what the voice. what the voice is saying. He he's looking at what the father's doing. He only does what the father does. He only uh, speaks what he hears the father say. 
So it's not really a change, but a change in what God is doing because he's mm, bringing mm, forth mm, the new mm. thing. And, and we're so comfortable yeah, so many yeah, times yeah. in doing what has worked in the past. Oh, mm -hmm. this is this has worked in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've done it this way multiple times and I've always got, well, you may have done it multiple times in the past, but it's not for today. You've got to hear the, what the voice is saying. This is about walking with the voice and, and being sensitive mm -hmm. to the voice. And you've all been sensitive to the voice. And a lot of times you're, you're thinking, oh, what do I do now? What mm -hmm. wouldn't it be wonderful if God just showed you uh, for the next ten years everything <laughs> what, what was going to happen in your life? But He doesn't operate like that mm -hmm. because He takes oh, Hallelujah. He, he takes out the intimacy mm -hmm. if He does that. He wants intimacy. He wants an intimate mm -hmm. relationship mm -hmm. with you, mm -hmm. and, and so. He's not waiting on your performance. Your performance is not the most important thing that he sees in you. What he wants from you is not your performance. It's your intimacy. Oh, hallelujah. It's your intimacy mm -hmm. with him. And, and so he doesn't give you a formula and say, oh, this is what you're going to be doing for the next five years. And this is what you're going to do from the, uh, up till the 10 years. He, he Because then it would all be about all of performance performance and about works mm -hmm. and I have all of these I have this agenda that I have to fulfill and I have these events that I have to do and I have these uh, uh, things that I have to do that's a that's all about works but what he wants he wants intimacy so there's a voice behind you mm -hmm. Isaiah 30 yeah oh, I, Isaiah 30 says there's the a voice, voice. You, you've got to be able to hear the voice. Ooh, hallelujah. The voice is coming behind you and saying, oh, Amen. this is the way. Walk, walk ye in it. Walk ye in it. This is Isaiah 30. Woo, this is the glory. way. You've got to hear the voice. See, if you're not hearing the voice, you get so focused on your agenda. You get so focused on your performance and, and you don't know what to do. There's, there's so many people uh, that I've talked to in recent times that don't know what to do. Uh, they they mm -hmm. haven't seen a plan for the next 10 years. But see, that's not the way God operates. He is interested in you being transformed and you being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. What do we see about the image of Jesus Christ? He walked with, with the, the voice. voice. <laughs> he would always oh, hallelujah. Walked, walked with, with the, the voice. voice. And so it wasn't about the performance. It was about that relationship, that that intimacy. Mm, so mm, I want to talk mm, about intimacy mm, for, for a minute. So there, there's this word uh, uh, in the Greek. Uh, it says no. It's, it's translated no. It's the Greek word, uh, 1007. It's gnosko. Uh, and it means intimate knowledge. See, there, there are oh, wow. knowledge wow, and wow, facts. Wow. There are not, and so some, you don't get the difference. Uh, just looking at an English translation uh, of the Bible and you see no here, no there, no, no, no. And the, these words K-N-O-W, no. But there is one of them that means to know intimately. That's like a mm -hmm. husband knows his wife intimately and they can she conceives and they have a child that's a personal relationship of intimacy mm. and that word see jesus said i'm going to have this kind of intimate relationship intimate personal relationship with my sheep hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah i'm talking about john 10 verse 27 because you, to know the voice, so you have to have this intimate mm. knowledge of the voice, mm. intimacy. Mm. Mm. Read John uh, 10, oh, 27. Hallelujah. Yeah, it says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, or I'm intimate with them. Oh, are you intimate with oh, the Lord? Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> and they follow me. 
Okay. If Wherever you, he goes, that's where we go. If you have an intimate relationship, intimate personal relationship with Jesus, and he said, you, you're going to hear my voice. You're going to hear my voice. Hallelujah. You Let know, us hear If we have this voice. intimate relationship with each other, you, you're going to hear my voice. And then it's going to bring obedience. You're going to, mm, going to follow mm, me. Mm, You're going to follow me. Oh, if we're hallelujah. in an intimate relationship, the same word, the same word, an intimate relationship between a husband and a wife, that intimate relationship produces a child. And now we're oh, talking hallelujah. about an intimate relationship with the Jesus, with Jesus that's based on hearing his voice oh praise god walking with, with the, the voice. voice oh lord oh, thank you glory Jesus. to god you'll hear his oh, voice oh lord we want and to hear your voice obedient. thank and, you lord and, and it's that out of that intimate relationship that we have love i want you to read this first john. Mm -hmm. first john 4 7 and 8 beloved let us love one another for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God Ooh, or is intimate with God. He who does not love does not have this relationship, for God is love. Okay, so out of this, out of this not intimate knowledge, intimate personal relationship with the Lord, it produces love, it produces obedience. We are obedient uh, to what mm -hmm. he tells us to do. Okay. Mm, hallelujah. The next thing I want to talk about is overcoming problems and situations. I don't know if you have uh, encounter any problems and uh, uh, difficulties, but we're going to have to hear the Lord. Yeah. How to overcome. Hear the voice. Our problems. Mm -hmm. Overcome mm -hmm. these problem situations and, and if, if you don't if you don't know see i'm going to talk about james here if you don't know what to do then ask this is james mm -hmm. one five mm -hmm. ask because he's not going to he's not going to reprimand you or uh upbraid you or cause you any problems if you ask him oh because you want to hear mm -hmm. what god has for you so it's it starts off i say count it all joy okay so what i see here is you face a problem and you need to count it all joy you count it joy why why because you know the end result what is the end yeah. result you're going to overcome the problem that's mm -hmm. the end result Amen. <laughs> that's why you Hallelujah. can count joy now something difficult happens in your life you count it joy not because of the difficulty but because you see the end result and the end result no. is you overcome it. You lack nothing. And if you haven't gotten to that point, you ask the father, you ask again, well, what am I supposed to do? Maybe you haven't heard the voice clearly. So you ask again and you don't stop until you overcome. Uh, this is not a win half and lose half mm -hmm. of the battles. No, you are victor. Now, thanks be unto God who, who always, always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. It's always. So this is, a, you follow the voice. You walk with the voice. You overcome problems. When hallelujah, you hallelujah. walk with the voice, you overcome problems. And if you haven't heard the voice yet, you ask. You keep asking yes. until you get the answer. So I want you to read this. James 1, verses 2 through 5. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Okay, there it is. That's the end result. Yeah, lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Okay. Hallelujah. So let's just go to what he's saying. What is it he's saying here in these few verses? 
there. Now, this is a real critical uh, thing to understand that when trials and problems come or tests or whatever they are, you're going to be transformed. You're going to be conformed if you're walking with the voice Amen. because the voice is going to show you what needs to be done. And it may be, I may be something inside of us mm -hmm. that needs to be changed. In right. order for us to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ, there are definitely some fine tuning on the inside of us that needs to happen in order for us to be conformed mm -hmm. to the image of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we need Amen. to be hearing what the Father is saying. We need to be hearing the voice. So when trials and tribulations come, we need to see the joy in it. That's the end result, mm -hmm. the joy. See, that's Jesus went to the cross. He went through the cross for the joy set, set before, before he, him. See, he had heard the voice. He's hearing the voice. Oh, hallelujah. And, and, and he knows the end result. And so he has joy before the joy is there. He already has it. He's already seen the joy. He's having the joy. He sees the end result. And that's what this is saying. We need to be like that. We need to be counting it joy. We need to be seeing the joy mm -hmm. that the result, that's the result of this trial, tribulation, how to go through this to get the end result uh, and that we're victorious Amen. because in Christ Jesus, you are victorious. And if you haven't gotten there, what is the, what is the next step? Ask for more wisdom. Yes. Ask. <laughs> so you hear, maybe you haven't heard exactly what you need, and we're going to overcome this, but we have to ask. And it's real important to be walking with the voice. Mm -hmm. We can ask, we can hear, and, and when we've heard the strategy, then we do what we're supposed to do, and we get the end result, and that's where the joy is, oh, lacking yeah. nothing, overcoming, fulfilling the test. And in the process, we're being conformed to the image of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Well, we're going to have to overcome some things in order to enter the kingdom of God. We've mm. got to enter some, mm. uh, have, we've got to overcome some tribulations, some trials and tests in order to enter the kingdom. And how we're going to overcome, it's by hearing the voice. Amen. I want you to read Acts 14. Acts 14, 22. Strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith, and saying, We must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. Okay, so Hallelujah. I want to emphasize that word faith in there, continuing in faith. So the way we continue in faith is continuing to hear, to hear the, the voice. voice. I'm continuing in. to hear the voice. And that's the way we overcome trials, tests and enter into the kingdom. And what does that mean? It means that the kingdom is having dominion. Ooh, God's kingdom is hallelujah. having dominion. It's ruling in our situation. Mm, mm, but we've got mm, to be continuing to hear the voice. Now I'm bringing this message uh, to a conclusion. And I just want to say just briefly, how do we walk with the voice? Well, mm -hmm. uh, first of all, you have to agree with what the voice is saying. Yes, amen. <laughs> amen. Amos, amen. Amos, Amos 3.3. 3. 3. Okay, Sherry. Uh, how can two <laughs> walk together unless they be in agreement? Mm. So you we've can, got to agree hallelujah. with the voice. So we've got to hear something in order to be in agreement with it. We, we can't agree with something we don't hear. You've got to be hearing the voice, agreeing with it, and moving forward where the voice is leading mm -hmm. and guiding us. Now, Hallelujah. here are a few other just simple points from Micah 6, 8. And uh, I, I just summarize them briefly in this way, that we have to be fair and just mm -hmm. in our actions and do what's right. Uh, we have to be, be merciful, merciful and uh, kind and kind <laughs> and kind and <laughs> humble. So let me just go over that. Was a, a little, a little uh, resistance there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go over over those again. Let's be fair, fair and, and just, just, merciful mm -hmm. and kind, kind 
and humble. Oh, These hallelujah. are just, and that's the all in one verse about how we're going to mm -hmm. walk with the boys. That's Here, Micah 6, read, 8. And read this, I have a couple of translations. He has shown you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? Uh, what does he require of us? But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And then let's let's hear it out of the Amplified Bible. And the Lord would say, hear my voice, my children, for I say unto you, this is a time to not shrink back but this is the time to go forward in victory. This is the time to overcome. This is the time to move in the miraculous. I say unto you, your lives are hidden in me. So go forth and do not fear. Do not be afraid. Hear my voice this day and I will speak to you and you will have joy. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Here is Lord. Woo! We're going to have joy. Let's read it out of the Amplified. He what, has what, told what, what, Micah 6 8. He has told you, oh man, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you except to be just, to love, to be diligently patient, to have kindness and compassion, and to walk humbly with your God, setting aside any overblown sense of importance or any self-righteousness. Whoo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I know that y'all are all waiting for this verse. Enoch walked with God and he was no more. Hallelujah. hallelujah.